Hi guys, for this video we're going to look at 12 different scrums from the national team's game against Turkey back in May. And we're going to look at different aspects for the first, second and third row and how we can improve on our scrummaging during the 2016 season. In the first scrum, we're going to be looking at body position, the footwork and alignment of all of the three rows. You can see before the engage we have a reasonably strong position. However, after the engage comes, you can see that both the front row and the second row have poor pushing positions. Both of them have their legs pretty much vertical and their bodies are pointing either flat or downwards. So either way, we're not in a strong position to get the drive going. Now this needs to be corrected before the ball comes in using footwork and dropping the knees lower to the ground. However, you can see that when the scrum half puts the ball in, we still haven't corrected this, so that our first row here has their body facing down, their shoulders are below their hips, and their legs are still not in a strong position, so we're never going to get a good drive on. You can also see that our flankers are pushing in a completely different direction to our front row. Now this means we cannot get a good drive going, and the result is that our number 8 is under tremendous pressure when we get the ball back, so it's not clean ball. For scrum number two, we're going to be looking again at body position and the alignment of the rows, but also the height battle that's going to be involved in winning the scrum. The first thing to note here is again the body position of the first and second rows. Note that the legs are still very much straight, almost pointing upwards, and that the bodies are still pointing downwards rather than forwards, so that shoulders are pointing down towards the ground rather than going through the target. Look how high the knees are and how straight the legs are. Now for the counter drive here, this is a really good work from Turkey. What's going to happen is their entire pack is going to sink and drive at the same time, making it a really strong push. Let's watch. As the ball comes in, the signal comes in and there's one eight-man push coming all the way through. And you can see that the effect is that our tight head prop and hooker are actually popped up from the, from the far side. And this is going to disrupt our entire push. So although Finland is going to get the ball back, we're going to get it back under real pressure. And again, our number eight is going to have a tough time of it. In scrum three, we're going to look at a little bit more of a positive for Finland scrummaging, and this is the head position of the loose head prop. You can see that the Turkish hooker really likes chatting to the ref throughout this game. Little shit. Notice how low our front row is getting, could have better body position there from our tight head prop, far more rounded than the loose head. But this is the important thing, right from the start, all the way from the engage, you can notice how the loose head gets his head under the chest of the Turkish tight head prop, meaning that he's in a really strong position to get his head and push up into his rib cage. Now the thing to notice, to pull this off, the prop needs to have tremendous strength, because you can see how nice and flat the Turkish scrum is, so the only way to really destroy that is to push up and through it, and this is going to take a huge amount of back strength from Carlet, our loose head prop, to push his head up under the chest of their tight head and disrupt their entire line. Once their body position is disrupted, we're able to get under them and drive through. In Scrum 4, however, we can see the dangers of when this tactic goes horribly wrong. So the Scrum starts off pretty much like the last one. Nice low body position from our loose head prop.
On the engage, you can see a slightly better body position from the first and second row. Again, the knees could be lower, the feet could be a little bit further back, and the bodies could be a little bit flatter, but at least we're not going head first into the ground this time. And there's better alignment between the first, second, and third rows. The problem in this scrum is what Carl is going to do, our loose head prop. In the last scrum, he pushed up a bit, but mostly through. Here, he's just going to pretty much push straight up, and the consequences are pretty bad for us. And you can see here, as he drives up, both our tight head prop and our, more importantly, our second row are popped completely out of the scrum. You can see that the result is that both our flanker and number eight and second row are pushing pretty much up and out completely. So we've lost all power in the scrum. And the immediate effect is that we are starting to wheel. And once again, our number eight is under horrible pressure and can't get clean ball away for the backs. In Scrum 5, you can see the importance of the loose head using footwork to recover from a bad position. Right from the start, you'll notice that our loose head prop is looking straight down at the ground. And because his head is tilting downwards, this is causing his spine to be in a curved position, so a really weak starting position. Remember, you want to be looking up and over a pair of sunglasses from the front row, and pelvic tilt so that your back is nice and straight, so that you can be strong. You'll see here on the bind, the push from the Turkish prop actually puts Carle on the back foot, so that on the initial engage, his back is still turning, and his legs are far more upright than they need to be to get a good push. So here's where the important thing comes for Carle. He readjusts his feet backwards and drops his body into a flat back position, and you can see the entire scrum there with the green line has a nice long line and pushing as one, so that when the ball comes in from the Turks, we're in a much better position to start the counter drive. And in fact, when the ball does come in, we are able to get the push on, even though we don't win the scrum. In scrum 6, we finally get a look at the tight head's body position. We also had a really good note on scrum stability. At the start, you can see that there's a nice body position from our tight head prop, the number 3. However, on the bind, note how high his body goes. Now if we pause it here, you can see on the engage, the red line is the actual angle of his body. Very upright legs, and even his body is still very upright. The green line shows the direction that he should be facing if he's going to drive towards the try line. However, the blue line shows the position he's actually facing, which is pretty much straight in at their hooker. And the result is this. There's no power to drive forward, so the only thing our tight head does is push up and into their, uh, their hooker. Now, first of all, this is completely illegal. But the other consequence here is that it wheels our scrum uncontrollably to the blind side. And the result is this. Our number eight, who's been pushing nice and straight, suddenly gets the ball on a wheeling scrum and he can't get the nice clean ball he wants. Result, we lose it again. In scrum number seven, we're going to look again at the number three, the tight head prop. And we're going to look at his body position and footwork. You can actually see that when we start off before the actual scrum, our tight head has a nice body position for starting off. Good angles, and he's much lower than the Turkish front row. However, the problems come on the bind call. You can see that for some god unknown reason, when the bind comes on, our tight head adopts a sort of swimmer's arc, and it changes his, his entire body position, bringing him more upright and putting his body far higher off the ground. So that when it comes time to the engage, everything has changed completely. Now the body is arced, the legs are straighter, and you can see that he's now lost the height battle. After being lower to start with, he's now higher than the Turkish prop. And this is going to allow the Turkish prop to do to us exactly what our loose head did to their tight head. Get the head underneath and drive him up. Now to correct this, our tight head prop has made a big mistake. He's put his foot too far back to try and get a bit of push in, but now the problem is when the ball comes in, he no longer has any angle to push with. And this means that he has no stability to counteract the drive that comes in from Turkey. The result is, of course, that our scrum gets demolished and we get put under pressure yet again. In Scrum 8, we're going to look again at the changes in the body position after the bind call, but we're also going to be looking at the awareness of our Scrum half at the bind. Now, as you can see from the start position, once again, our tight head prop here has a much better body position to start with than the Turkish prop.
but as with the last scrum, it all goes to shit here. For some reason, the binding mechanism looks really weak. It changes his entire body position so that on the engage, you can see that the rolls have again reversed, the Turkish prop is in a much stronger position, somehow our tight head has got him himself into a far too upright position, feet in the wrong places, and Turkey's beaten him into position. Now, what's even more important here is that you'll notice before the ball's even in, the entire Turkish scrum has shifted, and you can see it's clearly boring in towards our, our hooker. Now, what's even worse is that neither the touch judge nor our scrum half have managed to see this. Now, touch judge is one thing, but our scrum half should be aware of these positional changes. And there's nothing wrong with the scrum half checking and pointing out to the referee that the opposition are not pushing in straight. Do not put the ball in if this is the case. In scrum 9, we're going to have a look at some better footwork by the tight head prop, and we're also going to look again at spotting the boring in from the opposition. We have a new person here on the tight head. You can see again that there's a strong starting position, but the key difference here is that on the bind and on the engage, that the, the tight head prop doesn't allow his body position to be majorly changed. However, you can see on the far side that the loose head and the hooker have both got themselves into a bad position and need to correct this with footwork. Note how the tight head prop chases his feet forward to win the engage and also to get a better position before they hit. You'll see again that the Turkish front row and flankers are already starting to push in on our tight head prop and our scrum half again needs to look up, be aware of this and point this out to the ref before putting the ball in. However, even though the Turks are pushing in from the side, you'll notice that the stronger position from Tatu on the tight head buys valuable time for us to get the ball to the back and clean a ball for the number 8. For scrum 10, we get to see a really nice example of the tight head prop's body position in an ideal circumstance, and we'll also look again at the alignment of the first, second and back row. As we get towards the set, watch again the footwork of the tight head prop here as he drops into a strong position. Here before the ball goes in, you can see from the dark blue line that he's in almost the perfect pushing position. You can see the little dip in his back there where he's arched his hips back, made sure he's got a nice straight back and legs in a strong position. At the same time though, you'll notice that the first, second and third row are all pointing in slightly different directions, so we're not generating maximum power. So when the ball comes in, we're able to hold off the drive from the Turks, but we're not able to generate any forward momentum of our own. Scrum 11 is all about having a look at the height of our pack during the scrum and getting a really good eight-man push together. So we can already look after the set. Let's take a look at just how low the finished pack is getting. You can see how close the knees are to the ground from the first, the second and the third row. And the blue line there is showing a good median height, meaning that when we get the drive on, we're below the Turks and we can take them from their centre of balance and really put them out. Lastly, with Scrum 12, we're going to talk about knowing when to stand up and Scrum Half awareness of when they are in a bad situation. Almost right from the start on the set, you can see that we're in trouble. Turkey once again have started the scrum by in a really boring in position. Look at the direction they're facing. And you could already see that our loose head prop is in a bad position right from the start with an arched back. This is just going to get worse and worse. You can see there's a bit of movement between now and the ball coming in. And there's two things here. You can see that's our hooker that's pointing up there. How can we possibly start a scrum with our hooker with his shoulders up there? You can also see our blindside flanker is almost folded in half. This is a great time for the scrum half to put his hand up and say, ref, what's going on? Footwork could also correct this. Surprise, surprise, when the ball comes in, everything goes to shit and our ball is not clean.